There is, in the heart of the American Midwest, deep within the dense, dark woods, a little town called Meadows Creek. The town had its birth in the late 1800s, when it was little more than a remote settlement. In those days, the townsfolk wanted nothing more than a humble livelihood, relying on farming and trade with neighboring communities. Life was simple, but it was far from uneventful. One would expect the town's history to be just that, simple. But recently, the locals have seen the resurrection of an almost 200-year-old chilling legend. It mentions stories of a creature that lived in the shadows, known only as the Head Collector. As the tale goes, the first encounters of the head collector emerged roughly four years after the town's founding. Sometimes, under the cover of a full moon, the people of Meadows Creek began to experience terrible events. A wave of unease washed over the town as reports of what seemed to be the work of what we now call a serial killer spread like wildfire. Men, women, and even children awoke to find their loved ones with their heads severed while they slept. The head collector left no trace of its presence other than the gruesome remains of its victims. Desperate to protect their loved ones, the townsfolk resorted to staying awake at night forming vigilante groups and posting sentinels to ward off the head collector. Yet, despite their best efforts, the creature continued to strike, always under the veil of darkness, leaving the town paralyzed with fear. People soon found themselves afraid to sleep. They too might become prey to this elusive entity. Panic gripped the town, and they soon realized that they were not dealing with a mere human culprit. People began speculating on the head collector's identity. Some believed it to be a vengeful spirit, while others thought it was a curse laid by the native population that once lived in the area. Maybe the town was laid on top of an old native cemetery, a sacred land, perhaps. As the legend grew, so did the rumors. Fear and mistrust among the townspeople began to take place. Neighbors turned against each other, and the once close-knit community was torn apart by paranoia. The years passed, and the head collector's reign of terror persisted. It became an integral part of Meadows Creek dark history. Families left, businesses shuttered, and the town's population dwindled. This all went on until some months later, the attacks stopped. The remaining people came to the conclusion that the evil spirit was angry about the great amount of people living there. Others thought that the spirit was only attacking those with dark secrets. People that may have committed terrible wrongdoings in the past. To this day, the head collector's true nature remains a mystery. And Meadows Creek remains a town scarred by its sinister presence. Visitors are greeted by wary locals who speak of the legend in hushed tones, telling them that the woods surrounding the town are considered off-limits after sundown. The legend of the head collector was passed down through the generations, a haunting reminder of the terrible things that had befallen their ancestors. There was a government initiative to redevelop the town 10 years ago. 
This was done in order to accommodate the lumberjacks and workers to take advantage of the natural resources around Meadows Creek. The plan included giving them guaranteed pensions and housing. There is even three shopping malls now. People began to move to the town once again. One could assume that crimes and big cities are part and parcel. But newspapers are now talking about recent murders. Ones that seem to be the work of a depraved killer. Who really knows if this is the result of people being crammed into cities, the lack of respect between neighbors, or the mistrust that grows in cities? One thing I can be sure of, I'm glad that my family moved away when they could 